city and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Stop in at the Long Branch for a minute, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, might as well, Chester. There won't be much doing around town tonight. So I do hope they got a rip snorting fire going. Yeah, the wind's got a nip to it, all right. And it's going to blow up worse for a morning. Too. Looks like it. Uh, I thought Doc might be here, but it don't seem no place. Oh, ma'am. Yes, sir. Oh, Miss Kitty. You want to go over to the stove like one? Yeah, it feels warm right here, Kitty, after that wind outside. <laughs> Goes right through you, doesn't it? So I think I'll be going over by the stove, Mr. Dillon. Might be some kind-hearted stranger who will buy me a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Justin never gives up hope, does he? <laughs> Sit down, Kitty. See if you're not so busy. Yeah, thanks, man. Don't uh, you believe in kind-hearted strangers? No, not since I was nine years old. It took you so long. Well, I was kind of slow growing up. <laughs> you like a beer? Yeah, if you'll let a kind-hearted stranger buy it. Well, I wouldn't exactly call you a stranger, Kitty. Well, you'll have to admit I'm kind-hearted, but... Uh, Sam, a couple of beers. All right, Mr. You think a real bad storm's coming up, Matt? Well, it's that time of year. I remember the blizzard last year around Christmas time. Oh, yeah. That was a rough one, all right, wasn't it? Matt, things would be rough this time of year, even if the weather weren't bad. Oh? Uh-huh. What's that mean? Oh, a oh, holiday season. Families getting together and all. Just ordinary, decent, good times. Yeah. The people still live that way, Kitty? Not many out here. I sure don't. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Matt. This time of year, I was thinking too much and remembering too much. Well, that's not good, Kitty. This is a hard town and a hard country. You go soft and they'll kill you. I remember nights you come in here. After you had to kill a man. Nights you stayed till sun up, not talking alone mostly, and dying a dozen deaths inside. You know something, you're as sentimental as Chester. Come on. Oh, 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 uh, sure took you long enough to get around telling me about it. Yeah, he, he tied me up. Left me there in the back room. I just now got loose. You, you got to go after him, Marshal. That's kind of a tall order, isn't it? Trailing a five-hour head start. Well, that don't matter now, because I know who he is. Oh, I thought you said you couldn't see his face. And I couldn't. But I could tell by his voice and his walk and everything about him. It was Clint Doty. Clint Doty? Yeah, he's a homesteader up the river. Yeah, I know him. I know him. I can't believe Clint's the kind who'd do a thing like that. Though. Well, it was him, all right. I'm 100% certain. Well, all right, we'll ride out in the morning and bring him in. In the morning? Well, if it was him, he'd be there. Oh, but Marshal... Look, Jonas, I'm not going to ride 12 miles up that river bottom at midnight with a blizzard coming up for $68. Now, we'll leave in the morning. That's sunup. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, he must have heard us riding up, Mr. Jones. Yeah, you'd think so. I suppose he's got a hole up in the house and just try to shoot it out? I don't think Dodie's the type, Chester. Well, nobody didn't think he was the type to hold up Mr. Jonas, neither. Well, morning, Marshal. Chester? Dodie? How are you, Dodie? Come on in and sit. I, I got some coffee on the stove. Oh, we might warm our hands a little bit. Come on, Chester. Yes, sir. I reckon my daughter can rustle up some eggs inside me if you ain't at. Well, uh, thanks, Dirty, but we had breakfast before we left Dodge. And you can get warm at least. <laughs> hey, what you trying to do, Marshal? Blow up a storm? That looks that way. It's been snowing since daybreak out here in the river bottoms. And with that wind blowing, it's going to start drifting. I probably will. Well, I'll heat this coffee up a little. Uh, what brings you out this way, Marshal? You, Cody? Me? Well, what do you mean? We're here to arrest you. Take you back in. What for? Armed robbery. Armed robbery? You mean that hold up at the general store? That news seems to travel fast, doesn't it? How'd you know about it? Well, uh, uh... What's all the news about armed robbery? Oh, you, you know my wife again. Yeah, sure. How are you, Mr. Morning, man. I hear you accusing the plant of robbery, Marshal? That's more a matter of Wilbur Jonas accusing him, ma'am. When did this happen, Marshal? Yesterday evening, around 7 o'clock. Clint hasn't been away from this place for two days. Yeah, I know, Medora. My well, wife's word might not stand for much under those circumstances, Medora. Are you calling me a liar? No, Medora, stop that. There's people seeing me in town yesterday evening. And Wilbur Jonas claims he's one of them. Well, the way I heard it, the fellow that held him up was... Where in the man? He says he recognized your voice. Wilbur Jonas couldn't recognize sour apples if he had a mouth full of them. Well, I guess that'd be something for the judge to decide, man. Then you're 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 gonna take me into jail? Unless you can prove you were somewhere else at seven o'clock last night. Well, that might be kinda hard to do, Marshal. And yeah, then we better get started. We've got a hard ride ahead of us. Oh, now, wait a minute. I can't go off and leave Medora like this uh, with a storm coming on. Well, maybe one of the neighbors could come over and stay with her. There's none closer than five miles, Marshal, and they all got plenty of troubles of their own this time of year. Uh, I ain't even got enough firewood to put it up to last year more than a day and a half. I was aiming to get some laid in today. I'm sure she's made out before. Oh, well, maybe so, but, but not in her condition. Clem. Condition? What are you talking about? Well, she's going to have a baby, Marshal. Oh, for the love of... It's me. mighty hard on a woman having her man took off to jail and not even wood in the house to keep warm. <sighs> now, look, Dodie. You know, it wouldn't take no time at all if the... Three of us were to pitch in together. All right, Dodie, let's get at it. The chinkins all fell out of the north wall of the house. 
Oh, I was aiming to fix it today. I got a lot of bark slabs cut laying out back to the barn. Now, look, don't he? Oh, it's mighty hard on a woman in Medora's condition with the snow and the sleet blowing in on it. Don't he? Well, would it be all right if we eat first? <laughs> your duty to do. You got to take me in and I want you to know there's no hard feelings about it. Oh, sure, Tony. And I appreciate the way you both been so decent. Help me get things in shape so my door will be all right here alone. Oh, there ain't many lawmen that take the trouble. Well, she's got enough problems without making it worse for us. Well, let's put the tools away and get started. It's going to be dark before we get to Dodge. Sir, you sure are right about her having plenty of problems, Marshal. In her condition and all... <clears throat> And now, the cattle gone. The cattle gone? Oh, of course, we only had about 20 head, but with me going to prison, maybe, it's, well, it's been enough to see her through, her and the little one. What do you mean, the cattle gone? Well, I had them there in the meadow, back of the corral, letting them pick clean what pasture was left. I guess they drifted off like Well, of course they drifted off. When that storm hit, they turned tail and moved along with the wind. Cattle always do that. Well, I guess it don't matter much, though. Medora couldn't take care of no how, not in her condition. Well, she could if you'd hold them in the corral there next to the barn. All she'd have to do is push the hay out of the loft door. I reckon they drifted down south there about three miles and come up against the bluff. Oh, they'll probably mill around and freeze to death there if the storm keeps up. About three miles, huh? Mm Mm-hmm. I was aiming to go after them, but, of course, one man alone wouldn't have had much chance. All right, Dodie, come on, let's... Go find your cattle. Collected, Chester. We're heading for Dodge. 
Mind, just look at that sun on the snow, will you? Now, straight out there, them boots had out of swore. Hey, oh! What's the matter? Oh, oh, Mr. Dillon, I'm so lame, I don't even know if I can stand up straight. Well, keep trying. I swear I'm going to have to be spoon-fed for a month. I ain't never worked so hard in all my life. Hello, is anybody home? Somebody outside. Yeah. Golly, it's dark. Dark? Well, come on in, you old reprobate. I'm coming to pack up my horse and buggy. Well, I wonder what he's doing out this way. Uh, seeing a patient, I guess. He must have left town awful early. Hey, did somebody ride up? Yeah, it's dark. You about ready to leave, Billy? Oh, if you're still a mind to take me. Nothing's changed. Ah. Oh. Well, Matt. Yes, sir. Well, this is where I've been hiding out. How are you, Doc? Yeah. Oh, good morning, Clint. Good morning, Doc. Get any coffee? Oh, I have some in two shakes, Doc. Medora! Yes, Clint? Will you come out and fix some coffee? Yes, Clint. What are you doing out here this time of morning, Doc? Oh, the Murdoch baby was acting up. Touched the croup, so I spent the night there. Thought I'd just drop over and say hello to the dodies, as long as I was just close. Well, you could have done that in town. I'm taking him in. You're taking him in? Well, for what? Robin Jonas General's store night before last. Robin the jo- Now, where'd you get that idea? Well, Jonas claims he recognized him. Wilbur Jonas hasn't got the sense the good Lord gave a gopher. Matt, they caught the fellow had done that. What? That's right. It was some drifter riding through town. He threw a lot of money into a poker game, and the boys got kind of suspicious. And he finally admitted the whole thing. So they borrowed the jail key from Judge Bent and... Lock him up until you get back. Well, Clint, didn't you tell him? Well, uh, I... Uh, tell me what? Clint, he couldn't have done it, Matt. He was playing poker at the time with me and Mark Grimmick in the back room of the livery stable. Dodie. Uh, no, Marshal, I, I didn't lie to you. You asked me if I could prove where I was. Uh, I didn't know Doc's word was actual proof. Clint, Dodie... He done that deliberate, Mr. Dillon, letting us think he was guilty just to get us to do all that work for him. And I suppose the story about your wife having a baby. Oh, that's the gospel truth, Marshal. Well, it sure is, Matt. I'll vouch for that. Let me see now. It's about another six months. Let me see. Uh, Around the 1st of July. 1st well. of July? Yes. Uh, I didn't say when, Marshal. And, and you didn't ask me. Ain't she gonna wish us well, The 1st of July? So oh, help me, Dodie, for two cents. Oh, oh, we might even name him after you, Marshal, if we can't think of nothing else. So oh, help. <laughs> All right. All right, Dodie. Now, how about some of that coffee, huh? Directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Joseph Kearns, Virginia Gregg, and Ralph Moody. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke. Get the complete news first on the CBS radio network. CBS Chicago, the 780 spot in your dial, WBBM.